Hey folks, welcome to Tackle Tactics TV. Last episode you saw us on Port Phillip Bay catching a few nice snapper with Tackle Tactics Pro Angler Luke Smith. It was a pretty windy day the day we're out, as you can see, so we decided to come in, try and get out of the wind a little bit and chase another species, chase a squid. Not only a squid, pretty visual to catch, so we've got, we've actually got a triple hook up here. I hooked up on one, Luke says, slow it down, slow it down, I'll get the other rod on it, slow it down, I'll get another rod on it, and we're on a triple hook up. And not only are they visual, they're good fun to hunt across the, the reefy patches and the weed patches, but they're also pretty tasty critters as well. What do you reckon, Luke? Uh, definitely one of my favourite species. Good fun to catch, and as you say, they are definitely tasty. Yeah, and good fun. Pretty cool environment up on these flats chasing them as well. That is awesome, eh? Hey? That is crazy. You've had good success with these inked eggy special Akuma rods, Luke? Yeah, no, I, I love them. I've uh, never really been a big fan of the uh, eggy rods themselves, but after using these ones, I do like them just because they do have a really good feel about them. They're a nice slow taper throughout them. Um, some of the other ones can be quite stiff. <laughs> <laughs> they can be quite stiff and you can uh, end up pulling a few too many fish. Um, but with these ones, You've seen before that one we just left it in the holder, let the rod do the work, nice smooth drag on the Helios reel and does the job quite well. Yeah, that's awesome. That is and pretty cool. On again. Tasty, tasty critter. This is a wild hot bite on some squid. So that, that inked eggy special rod from Akuma, check that out. That's it's eight foot, bit over eight foot rod, and it has got that nice soft taper in the tip so that you don't pull the jigs out of the squid. But it's also that additional length gives you a long cast and you've got enough strength in the in the butt section of the rod here that you can control that jig and work that jig effectively as well to get the squid to take the jig. So you've got that control, you've got that casting distance, and yeah, it's pretty sweet balanced rod in your hand as well. They get bigger than that one, but that's a pretty tasty sized squid. Also awesome bait if you're looking for baits to either chop up dead baits or live baits or whatever you're looking for for baits. Squid make an awesome bait. A lot of species love to eat squid. So these eggy rods, these inked eggy specials, we've just got them rigged up with, you know, a 20, 30, 40 size reel, whatever suits what you're doing. Uh, Line-wise, say an eight to 10 pound braid, 10 pound leader is good. And you can fish with a clip if you want to change jigs until you work out what color the squid are on. Switching up the color can make a difference, you know. The, the pinks and the blues are popular. Otherwise, you know, switching to a light color or switching to a dark color can make the difference in terms of the bite. I've got the size 20 of Pixor on this inked rod, and Luke's running a Helios 30. And both of those are nice reels with a smooth drag, and that smooth drag is important so that you don't pull jigs out of the squid. I'll get him in the well. Now, Luke, current bag limit down here is 10 per person. Yep. Um, always important to check bag limits, of course, if you're going to a new region or, you know, bag limits change over time. So important to check those. And the, and the squid can be quite prolific? Yeah, definitely. Through here, they come into the bay this time of year um, as you get into spring and into summer to breed and do their thing. They lay their eggs. Yep. Obviously, because there's not much current in here, it's perfect for them to find these nice, shallow, grassy beds um, and drop their eggs in them. Um, but w with them, uh, the benefit is of the bag limit. Obviously, 10 is quite a lot of squid, especially when they're decent size. This one's only a little one. But with them, they only live for no longer than a year. Yep. So, what if you see this one, you come back down next year, same time, he's no longer here. So, you don't have yep. to feel guilty about taking any of them. Yeah, so good feed. You can keep a few for a feed, no problem. Definitely. For, oh, I just watched that one eat it. <laughs> that was beautiful. That's perfect. Yeah, that was awesome. Smash it. That's, that's the big key about having a good, good pair of Polaroids. Um, on today's not too bad. We've got pretty good visibility still. Yep. And you just watch the jig as it comes up every time, just in case there is a follow like yep. that. Yeah, he was following that one that close one, behind it. That. Yep. So that with the good with a good pair of polarized sunnies, you can spot those weed beds and, and reefy stuff and that definitely, that you want to catch them on. Yep. And one thing you said to me as well, like just now here we've had if one follows and that sort of thing. But you said often the big ones are in pairs. Definitely, quite often that uh, they'll pair up like that. If you're having a, a tough session and that, you do get that one hook up best thing to do is get the other rod, get the other mate, pass straight in behind. Um, it might feel like you're bombing your mate, but that's the best thing to do <laughs> is pass straight in on them. You can see with these ones, they're in numbers. You bought, caught that first one and there was three followers, so. Yeah, so that's important. While they're there, get amongst it. Definitely. 
has the colours in yours, he's going full dark camo. <laughs> We're fishing the new Fish Inc. Eggy Licious Squid Jigs, currently available in a size 3 and a size 3.5 in a stack of different colours and some interesting patterns as well that are a bit different, set them apart from some of the others. Sink rate, slow to moderate sink rate, so perfect up on this weed and these reefy sorts of areas that we're fishing and a nice tight action so you can, you can work it with a slow lift, you can twitch it a bit more aggressively, pause it, let it sink back down there again. It's important to mix up the colours, mix up the retrieves until you find out what the squid are looking for on the day. Uh, these jigs you'll find awesome value for money, so not an expensive jig but quality wise awesome. Nice tight cloth on there so it's not easily destroyed by the squid. Big realistic eyes and your feathers on the side there. Uh, in terms of hooks, a bit different on this jig as well. So on some of the cheaper jigs you get, they sink and just lay flat on the bottom, which is incre increases your snag and foul rate when you're fishing that squid jig. The Eggylicious jigs, fish ink, buoyant in the tail end. So it sinks down like that, and if it's sitting on the bottom, it'll ride tail up. And the tail section is actually set, the hooks are a couple of degrees set higher as well to reduce that snagging as well. Point of difference in the hooks, so they're nice sticky Japanese owner hooks on here. And they're also a finer wire hook. So they're not, the squid's not going to bend them, but if you do snag it on the reef or you snag it on the bottom, you can use a slow draw and straighten those hooks out bring the jig back in and bend those hooks back into shape again. Some of the jigs you'll find out there have got heavy Chinese wire hooks on them and those hooks won't bend back out again. So if you do snag up, you often lose that jig on the bottom. So that's the Fish Ink Lures Eggylicious jigs. Three and 3.5 size currently, and we've been smashing them on them today. All right, so we've got one each and one on the drift rod. So you've got another rod there out so we're, we're working a rod each, and you've also got a drift rod, and it's picked up a few squid as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, so the idea for that is, obviously, once you do find them on the drift, cast them ahead of the drift, um, actively working them back. You find a patch, and as we've seen today, they're in good numbers when you do find a little patch. The idea of that one is behind you. When you're casting quite often, you're still missing a bit of ground. Yep. It's just an extra, extra jig in the water, extra chance of picking them up. But when you get on a hot little patch like that, you drift over the top of them, out the back works as well. And we've got, we're running 3.5 size jigs yep. on our casting rods, and you've got a three on that one. Yep, the main idea with that is obviously we're just dragging that one, no one's really watching it. We don't want to get snagged in the bottom, so you don't really need a big jig. Yep. Uh, the benefit of casting ahead of us with a heavier jig is that we're drifting pretty fast towards it today with all the wind. So just by having that heavier jig, it gets down in that zone that little bit easier yep. as we're working it back. That one out there being a lighter one, it just sits a bit higher in the column. We can yep. let a bit more line out, get it away from the boat a bit. So for shy squid, they just come And those bigger it. ones, we can cast a bit further and we can Definitely. Yeah, work them a bit quicker and that sort of thing. These rods. Yeah, that's cool. And on the flats, what are we looking for as we drift here? So the, the main thing with it, uh, when you first pull up to a spot, you want to try and fish a spot. You want to go into, you can get them anywhere up to sort of 10 metres in the bay here, quite often offshore, you can go deeper again. Yep. In here, I usually aim for water between sort of three and six metres. Uh, and what you want to see is the nice broken ground. Um, so when the sun's out, you'll get that nice green water. You see your dark patches, they're your weed beds, and that's yep. what you're looking for. Um, some types of weed, like the nice grass, can be the seagrass can be a lot better than other spots. Yep. Um, if there's a few rocks thrown in and that little bit of reef, definitely helps. It's just a matter of fishing all different areas until you find and tar where they're targeting that that structure and that darker water, Definitely. and that's where they're laying their eggs, and that's where they're hunting, I guess, bait fish and prawns and whatever yep, else they're eating. Exactly right. Yeah, spot if, on. If they go out to the open, they're in the open flats. It makes them an easier target as well. So. Yeah, hide in the weed, ambush these jigs. Yeah, hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. It's all happening. <laughs> so that did go quiet for a little bit. What's your theory on that one there? Because we, it did go, the, like you said, the sky's gone darker. Yeah, so the clouds they went a bit quiet. come over and uh, went a bit dull for a bit and we weren't getting squid for um, a little while there. So one thing you can try and do is just mix up your colours. Um, so what we did is we opted to go a bit darker, um, darker style jigs with the cloud cover. 
Um, hasn't taken too long. It's swap over and work pretty well. Yep, so those bright conditions, we had those lighter colours on. You were even using one of the white ones. Yep. And then sky got dark, bike got slow, changed it up to the darker colours. Yep. And, um, yeah, squid on again, hey? Yeah, it's just a matter of mixing up. If you're not, get, not getting squid and you're on the right ground, it's a good time of year. You know they should be there. It's just a matter of trying up to find what they're working. So colour's one thing. The other thing is uh, with your techniques as well, mix up your techniques till you find what's working. Yep. What are, uh, what are a few different techniques that you might use? So stock standard when you start off is usually just some soft little lifts, not too aggressive. Um, see if that works for me. If, if it goes quiet, I might do a cast or two where I'll get sort of a bit more aggressive, give a couple of bigger flicks. Yep. Um, it's just important when you're doing those bigger flicks, you've got to allow more sink time yep. because you're ripping it up higher. Um, and then you can go all out and really whip it hard, uh, sort of proper eggy style. The thing with that is make sure you back off your drag a little bit, just because if you are really ripping it, the squid decides to grab it. Uh, quite often you can rip your tentacle clean off, so yep. you just back your drag off. So if something does grab it, you've got that bit of leeway. Yep, so mix it up between those slow lifts, the more aggressive but give it time to sink, yep. and then the real eggy style whip that the Japanese and that sort of thing use but yeah just be careful not to back the drag off don't tear the tentacles off yeah and also with your drift rod you mentioned your drag setting on your drift rod as well yes yeah, so with the drift rod um, especially if you're by yourself you're concentrating on what you're doing ahead of you you're not looking behind you too much one thing I do is I back the drag off that one just so when one does come along grabs that it just doesn't pull the hooks especially when you're drifting away pretty quick it's got a bit of leeway you hear the drag pull the rod loads yep. up and what you've seen before is when we've had three on at a time, you can leave that out there for five minutes and it just keeps pulling away. And as, yep. long, as, as long as it stays tight, it'll stay on. Yep, so you hear that zzz, 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 and you know, and then you can even switch it, put the other one in the rod holder, grab that one, deal with yep, it, hey? Exactly. Yeah, that is magic, mate. Tasty critters, good fun, very visual. I've, I've loved it, hey? Absolutely awesome. There you go. If you want to give the squid a, a crack, Check out those Fish Inc. Eggylicious jigs, size 3, size 3.5. Uh, awesome range of colours. And check out that inked rod as well for a long, car long cast and uh, plenty of control of your jig and that sort of thing. Thank you, Luke. Awesome fun. No